Hello, it's me again. I just reviewed uh, Bride of Reanimator, um, so check that out if you haven't already. And uh, we're going to do probably one more uh, movie review for tonight. And um, since uh, one of my earliest videos on here was a review of the original Sleepaway Camp, um, I figured I would take a look at the sequel, Sleepaway Camp 2. Um, now, you know, just to recap a little bit, now, Sleepaway Camp, you know, was one of the many 80s slasher films that took place at a summer camp, uh, but I feel like this movie kind of took it to another level. It was, a it was a little scarier, a little more suspenseful, um, you know, it was a little, taken a little more seriously, it was still cheaply made, still had a low budget, still had, like, a lot of the slasher tropes, um, but, like, this was, like, I don't know, this was, like, a little more effective to me, you know, and, like, it was a little more, um, as I get, a little more grounded than a lot of the movies of this ilk that were made around the same time. And the thing is, uh, it was directed by Robert Hiltzik, who also wrote it, and it concerns a young girl named Angela, played by Felissa Rose. Now, Angela in this movie is very shy, very introverted, very, um, you know, very emotionless, and, like, very calm, and, like, you know, not very, uh, you know, not very, um out there, you know, not, um, not very outgoing, I guess I'm trying to say, um, and, uh, you know, <sighs> I thought that was a very fascinating character to have in a horror film, I really followed her story really well, I felt, really felt for her, you know, her and her cousin were at this, this camp, and, like, they didn't really like it there, especially Angela, she had a hard time, she was bullied and picked on, you know, for being so quiet and so meek, and, um, the thing is, this movie has one of the most intense and shocking endings of any horror movie ever, and I'm going to have to go ahead and spoil it in order to talk about the second film, so turn this video off if you don't want the ending of Sleepaway Camp spoiled. Okay, you've been warned. Okay, so at the end of this movie, it turns out that Angela is actually a boy. It turns out her crazy and eccentric aunt, um, who adopted her after her parents were killed, and her brother, um, or actually her sister, um, turns out she was actually the boy Peter, and her, their aunt, since she already had a boy, she wanted a girl. So she kind of made Peter, you know, grow his hair out, probably gave him hormones, who knows, had him dressed like a girl, and had him become Angela, taking on his dead sister's identity. And this is revealed at the end of the movie in one of the most shocking, most deranged moments in a horror film you will ever see. It's very intense. So yeah, this movie is very, very deep, very moving, still, as I said, still, you know, kind of, you know, trashy and... Um, you know, kind of sleazy, but still, like, I had a very compelling story, and it was very shocking and outrageous, and, like, very, and while it was over the top at a lot of times, it was still taken, like, a lot more seriously. Now, the thing about the sequel, Sleepaway Camp 2, directed by Michael Simpson, um, I believe that's his name, yeah, Michael Simpson, this takes it in a completely different direction, where the first movie was kind of more serious and more, a little more sophisticated, de de despite being a typical cheap, uh, kind of throwaway <laughs> slasher premise, um, this movie sees Angela return, and this time she's not played by Pol Felissa Rose, she's played by Pamela Springsteen, who's, yes, Bruce, Bruce Springsteen's sister, and she plays Angela in a completely different way, where in the first movie, Angela was shy and introverted and really quiet and kind of more like Michael Myers, the Angela in this movie, um, is more like Freddy Krueger, she's very, she grins a lot, she's, you know, she's kind of, she's very talkative, she's very, uh, extroverted, she's very outgoing, um, she says wisecracks and one-liners, um, she's just really, really, you know, really evil and, like, <laughs> kind of played more for laughs than, you know, for scares, and, um, yeah, the whole movie, the whole tone of this movie is different, too, like, this one's more of a kind of a generic slasher film with a body count and over-the-top creative kills, you know, chock full of gore and female nudity, which, those were mostly absent in the first movie, um, this is more of, like, a typical slasher, kind of more, this was more entertaining and more fun, and you're gonna get, like, a lot of laughs and a lot of amusement about out this one. This movie is, like, one of those more compelling, more insightful films that might change your life after you watch it. I might be exaggerating a little bit, but yeah, the, the two Angelas in these two films are totally different. Like, wow, yeah, as I said, Felicia Rose is more like Myers, um... Pamela Springsteen is more like Freddy, and in this movie, she plays a camp counselor, um, she actually got a full sex change, so she's not just a, you know, a transvestite, uh, boy anymore, she's all grown up, she's got a sex change, she's a complete female now, um, they don't really go into much backstory about that either, there's not really a very much, a big connection to the first movie, she seems like a totally different character altogether, you can even tell, like, in the cover art, like, what kind of movie it is, just Jason's mask, Freddy's glove, you know, uh, Sleeper Camp 2, Unhappy Campers, um, you know, uh, there's the original, like, VHS artwork, the original poster, I guess you could say, um, yeah, here's the one for the, 
first film. I like these better. I need to get these films on VHS. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, this totally different movie. Totally takes a different tone. This is more funny. It's more outrageous. Yeah, as I said, more amusing. Um, yeah, gorier. Um, just you know, more of a like an exploitation film. Like, it's, there's not any shocking twists or turns. There's not really any moving moments or any intricate characters. Um, you know, they, they really worked very hard in the first movie. It's more deep and serious. I think that, you know, Robert Hiltzik did a great job with that, creating the Angela character and building up to that shocking ending. And, yeah, Michael A. Simpson, who directed this one, as I said, uh, takes it in a much... It, it, it's, it's such a different movie. It's just, just like... They're, like, almost polar opposite. Two totally different Angelas, two totally different movies, two totally different tones. Um, they both feel like 80s slasher films, but in a totally different way. Um, as I said, the first one was kind of more like Friday the 13th. This one almost, almost feels like Nightmare on Elm Street, like as I said. Um, and yeah, Angela here, she's a camp counselor. She's obsessed with camping. She's obsessed with being a camp. And anybody who breaks the rules, like vicious, but she has to kill them uh, and, and slaughter them in brutal, vicious ways. In the first movie, I feel like she kind of killed people. She was the killer in the first movie, by the way, if you missed that. She kind of more killed people from for revenge and like kind of defending herself. And plus she was having kind of a... Uh, psychological, um, emotional breakdown. It was kind of part of a meltdown. She was kind of losing her mind and descending into insanity. And the second movie, she just kills people because they're less than perfect. You know, they break the rules. They offend her some way. They uh, violate the camp, um, you know, code and stuff. You know, they smoke pot or have sex or you know, do anything illegal or, or you know, anything a good camper shouldn't do, as she puts it. And she would massacre them. And it's like, wow, yeah, what a different character. The first movie, I didn't think Angela even wanted to be at the camp. She didn't like the camp. She didn't like anything about camping. She wanted to get out of there um you know she killed as i said kind of to defend herself kind of to escape um and you didn't know who the killer was either in the first movie it was a whodunit it was a mystery you didn't know that angela was a killer or that she was really a boy until the very end this movie it leaves no doubt it opens with angela killing a girl and cutting her tongue out for having a big mouth and just you know constantly you know saying wise cracks and saying funny lines and really over the top kills you know gosh we have a girl um shoved in a porta potty full of leeches and you know um a stoner, uh, two stoner sisters who are like burned alive, and a guy, a de a decapitation, all this crazy stuff, all these outrageous kills. Where in the first movie, it's kind of more about the suspense and kind of like the scares and uh, like, you know. Um, you know, shocking twists and turns. This movie's more about the kills and about the nudity and about all the, you know, all the, all the generic slasher tropes. You know, they're all there. Um, so yeah, this movie isn't really as heartfelt or as emotional, but I love these two movies in totally different ways. They don't really feel like they're part of the same series. And I think they only made this a sequel just so people would see it. You know, they gave her the name Angela. They slapped a, you know, they slapped a part two. They slapped Sleepaway Camp on the title. Um, <laughs> yeah, it really doesn't feel like a follow-up to the first movie in a lot of ways at all. Um, and yeah, as I said, it's, it's, a, it's like a totally different film. Um, <clears throat> as I said, I love them both in different ways. They feel like they are you know don't belong in the same series. Now, you know, obviously this was... Um, I mentioned this in my the, the review of my first, uh, the first movie, which I did a long time ago, one of my first videos. So check that out if you haven't already. I mentioned that there is um, there's a part three that directly follows this one. I think they were filmed back-to-back, -back and it was released the following year. Um, <clears throat> now... That movie's not too good. It just feels like a rehash of this one. It feels like the same movie, but not as good. The kills aren't as creative. Uh, Angela's not quite as fun as she was in this one. It's filled with all this filler, filled with all these flashbacks. It just wanted to, like, drag out the runtime. just feels like they, they, they didn't really put much into it. And, and yeah, I mean, this is kind of a tra kind of trash, too. It's not a good movie, but it's really fun. But I thought like the third movie was just missing everything that made the second film great. And then finally, um, yeah, that was directed by Michael Simpson as well. Then finally, Robert Hiltzik wanted a true sequel to this one. And so he made Return to Sleepaway Camp years later, seeing Felissa Rose return as Angela. But unfortunately, that movie was a train wreck. It was one of the worst movies I ever saw. It was a crap fest. I, oh my god, I could barely set through it. It was disgusting. It was obnoxious. It was missing everything that was, you know, good about this movie. It was just a, a ugh. It was just garbage. Um, it's right up there at Texas Chainsaw Massacre of the Next Generation. So, yeah, definitely skip that one. So I wouldn't bother with two, uh, with uh, 3 and 4. Uh, there's also another one called Sleepaway Camp 4, The Survivor, which is just, it was incomplete. Like, there's some footage floating around of it. You can get bootleg copies of it and stuff. Um, but what I've seen of it wasn't that impressive. It's not even really about Angela. Um, this is Other Girl. And, like, I don't know. It's not even really connected to the Sleepaway Camp series. I don't consider it an official part of the series. But I guess check it out if you want to be, a, you know, a com a completist or whatever um but yeah i'm not a completionist whatever uh but i'm not i'm not bothered with it but anyway yeah. um yeah definitely check these these two out and um yeah as i said totally different movies um yeah this is a review of sleepaway camp 2 so i'll go ahead and uh, close out by saying um this is a very fun sequel um 
has some interesting characters, um, but yeah, like, as I said, if you want to be moved and, and shocked and, and, like, freaked out and, um, you know, see a really complex story unfold and see a bunch of shocking twists and turns, see the first movie. If you, you, know, you want to be kind of compelled and maybe kind of frightened a little bit, um, see the first movie. But if you just want to have fun and have some laughs and, like, have a good time and just uh, kill, you know, kill two hours and turn your brain off and just, you know... Um, <laughs> you know, just enjoy yourself, watch this one, because, yeah, this one's just, like, yeah, this one's just totally silly, and feels more like a generic slasher film, I didn't really, I don't feel like they, they, you know, this wasn't as well-written, or, you know, as, as complex as the first one, it's just, you know, a typical slasher film, the body count, um, I do like the way Pamela Springsteen plays Angela, it's hard to pick between her and Felissa Rose, because they're such different characters, despite, um, you know, technically being the same, you know, Felissa Rose was Angela Baker, and then, you know, in this one, she changed her name to Angela Johnson, I don't know why she got the same first name, because, you know, it's just like, uh, you know, it's kind of, makes it kind of obvious, doesn't it, and they look nothing alike either, um, I might give their edge to Felissa Rose, because I really, like, felt sorry for her, I really felt like, you know, all her emotions she displayed, she did a really good, um, it was really good performance-wise, and, like, I really felt for her, and, you know, I really wanted to see her, you know, succeed, and whereas in the second film, you know, I love Pamela Springsteen, she was funny, but, like, I wanted them to, you know, I wanted them to, like, I wanted her to meet her, you know, I wanted her to get what was coming to her. I wanted her to finally meet her doom in the end. Like, I wanted her to do away with her. Because she just enjoyed killing people so much. And she was, like, one of the villains that you kind of, you know, you want to see them, <laughs> their demise at the end. And, yeah. But, yeah, this one sets up part three. Uh, you know, it f directly goes into that one. So that one's, like, I guess a direct continuation. Kind of a conclusion of that story. And the Return to Sleepaway Camp completely ignores two and three. But it's even, even worse movie than part three. Um, so I'd love to see a, a true proper sequel to part one. They were talking about one, making one called Sleepaway Camp 3D or Sleepaway Camp The Reunion. Um, there's a few other titles. I'd love to see like a, you know, a fifth film that like feels more like the first movie and has Felissa Rose return as Angela, but do it the right way, not like Return to Sleepaway Camp did it. Um, yeah, anyway, it's a very fascinating series, very interesting, um, yeah, how, how different the movies are. It's kind of akin to movies like... Uh, franchises like Prom Night, where it has sequels that are completely unrelated and, um, you know, just all over the place and just kind of do their own thing, despite having the same title. Now, this one, you know, is loosely connected to the first one, because it does have the Angela character, but, um, you know, it's kind of kind of similar to the Silent Night, Deadly Night series, too, because they have the same characters, uh, but they're so drastically different, and so, yeah, um, so I'd say go ahead and check out both of these movies. You'll likely um, be like me and enjoy them in different ways. Um, this, to actually be, you know, kind of moved and and shocked, um, <laughs> and maybe even horrified, and disturbing in me, and then watch this one, you know, just for some laughs, and, you know, just for a cheap thrill, this is kind of like a fast food movie, um, but yeah, I guess that about does it, um, yeah, Sleepaway Camp, uh, again, I'd love to see a fifth film, I, I do like these movies, especially, you know, well, mainly the first two, you know, I think there's definitely some promise there, um, I like watching them, uh, they're responsible for some good memories, uh, and yeah, as I said, they're so different, so it, it's, it's kind of interesting, you know, comparing the two, the two different Angelas and, you know, the two different styles of, of movie. Um, all right, guys, well, uh, I think that about covers it. Um, I'm Hellhound, and it's probably the last review I'll do today, so, um, yeah, check out my earlier Brian Reanimator video, and if you're into heavy metal, check out the two videos I did, um, with my other show, Into the Pit, that I do with my buddy Dr. Guts, uh, check those out, we did, we talked about our favorite black metal albums, and then we talked about, like, our least favorite albums from our favorite bands, like, you know, Demonic by Testament, and, um, you know, kind of the bands we love, like, their low points, um, you know, stuff like that. Um, shit fun by Autopsy, <laughs> stuff like that, bands we love with albums that we uh, don't really like all that much, uh, but anyway, yeah, check those out if you like metal, and um, I guess I'll see you guys later. Peace.